Bar Stool Sports. Bar Titus. Brandon Walker. Mostly Sports. Welcome to Mostly Sports. Ooh, sorry. Welcome to Mostly Sports presented by Jägermeister. I'm Mark Titus. He is Brandon Walker. Today is Monday, March 18th. We are live from Chicago, and we want to talk to you about Jägermeister. Uh, they could have written a totally normal ad here, a really classic ad. They could have talked about their history in the 56 botanicals. It could have been all salesy and cutesy, but they don't. They know you don't care. Jägermeister doesn't want to be like all those other brands that buy ads on the show. Their words, not ours. They just wanted to say two things. Jägermeister is great, but everyone has been drinking it wrong. How should we be drinking it, Brandon? Ice cold. Ice cold at zero degrees Fahrenheit to be exact. <laughs> Ice cold shots of Jägermeister. <laughs> That's it. That's all I want to tell you. So wherever you're out, if you're hanging with friends or at the bar, or maybe you're doing all the sports stuff or just the mostly sports stuff, Call the shots. Cheers with Frosty. Zero degree Fahrenheit shots of Jägermeister. Damn, that's cold. And remember to check out Jägermeister at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister, the core 35% alcohol by volume. Imported by Mass Jägermeister U.S. White Plains, New York. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? Black dick. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I want to talk about black dick. <laughs> I mean... Listen, I feel for you, and I know it's a big time of year. I know we got a bracket, but you can't deny that Black Dick happened yesterday. No, you cannot. Let's talk about Black Dick later. Let's talk about the NC. But really, they knew what they were doing. They I mean, knew they, they, you see, you see in the video. Of course, they knew what they were yeah, doing. Yeah, they're laughing about it. But now, what I like is there's a bunch of players in the NBA with a bunch of names. And they're all thinking, all right, how do we top? They all back? saw they all saw this, and then they did yeah. the Cam Newton gif where they're like, okay, right. <laughs> yeah. right. how do right. I top Black Dick? Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Because I, I assume Dick's going to be involved with a lot. Yeah. lot. Who's he? Pl- who's Dick play for? Uh the Raptors, right? We got to check the Raptors schedule. Whoever's yeah. coming up, we got to see if we can get better than Black Dick. Um, Smart Dick, so- Harden Dick, so- Smart so- Dick, <laughs> <laughs> Little Dick. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it needs to be a little dick, I think. Dick yeah. ball. Josh Giddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we have the best sporting event of the year is upon us. Yep. We have this this look, this little this little thing. What you got there? You got the what what what? Which one? Which one? you take that one? This right here is the most magical sheet of paper on earth. Mhm. There's just Nothing but possibility and hope and, and memories and buzzer beaters. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. As of right now, anything could I happen. I could write any one of these teams all the way through. I filled out my bracket last night. I looked at it, and I thought, I have a perfect bracket right yeah. now. Yeah. I could have just called. I could have just pulled off a perfect bracket. Yeah. Anything could happen, Brandon. Well, you said it's last night to. on the group text, you said, hey, tomorrow can we fill out, uh, fill out a bracket using doggy treats? And I was like, well, I ate breakfast about 6 a.m., but yeah, yeah. That, so that's. I haven't filled out my bracket. I thought I was going to be doing that, and you, then you can do it with Moses. You brought this you goddamn dog in. You can do it with Moses if you want. We'll put treats down for you. <laughs> you brought the whole family in here. You got That's you it. got Bill Titus over there hitting golf balls. Coach Titus is here. Yeah, just uh, yeah, he's got his IU. IU did not accept the NIT invite, and he's he's totally fine with that, I guess. So <laughs> there's always a little bit of um consternation there's always a little bit of backlash about what the committee did who they left out this year did seem a little bizarre yeah they, they did some things that you know they put duquesne at number 11 duquesne had to win their conference tournament just to, to get into this thing and they put them at 11 above teams like james madison right. above teams uh that, that probably shouldn't be above you got some other smaller seed problems like auburn's not happy they only got a four Stuff like that. I think UConn is not really happy. They think their their bracket's a little too loaded. Otherwise, as far as the bubble goes, Virginia got in and a couple teams got left out, but not a whole lot of controversy. Uh, yeah, the Virginia getting in is crazy. Virginia has no. They argument. were sixty ninth in the They have no argument whatsoever to be in. Um, I don't even think they were arguing they should be in. If you see the video of them learning that they're in, yeah. they all are like, st- it's not a celebratory. It's more of like a stunned. Yeah. I mean, they are celebrating, obviously, but it's just like, what the, fu- what the fuck? <laughs> right. uh, are are they serious? They're putting us in. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I I was pretty shocked Virginia made it, uh, like everybody else. Like our, our friends at Delphi Bracketology Club. They they got sixty seven out of sixty eight. I know, buddy. Uh, the, he's ready to pick his bracket, bracket huh here in a second he, um, he's upset virginia made it too i guess uh yeah they got 67 i see everybody seemed to not have virginia in and virginia got in um so out of the big east snubs uh or out of all the snubs really not just the big east who do you think got it the worst who, who you take virginia out who are you putting in i think st john's was the best team right now but i think seton hall had the best case to be in okay um in terms of like overall resume and i think they swept st john's I think I have that right. And I think uh, Seton Hall had, like, big wins. And, um, yeah, they, they felt like – throughout the season, they felt like more of an NCAA tournament team to me than St. John's. But St. John's was hot down the stretch. Uh, yeah, I I don't I don't know. It's – it's the bubble was really weird this year because the, there weren't a ton of great teams. Like, they're never, there's never a ton of great teams on the bubble. Um, but this year in particular, the bubble seemed – Listen. You can blame me. That's not my fault. You you blame my eyes for going towards a dog. There's a dog in the room. All right. Well, I don't need to talk. Let's just no. What you're talk. saying is the bubble. The bubble is always. There's not a lot of great teams. But even this this year, by bubble standards, was kind of weak. It was kind of weak. Yeah. Um and and then it got even more interesting because the bubble shrunk because all the bid stealers that were happening. Where you have situations like NC State winning the ACC tournament, which I don't think was "quote unquote" supposed to happen. Or that's the most bid stealers we've ever had. Oh, most bid stealers we've ever had. So yeah. now you have the tens in the playing game. The bubble shrinks. Uh, so now it's just like really a mess because you have a bunch of teams that um, don't have great resumes that are fighting for a very very small sp- yeah. number of spots. Virginia gets in. So and how do they like survive a, that? I don't know. I, 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 my fear is that this is going to be used as a, a, um, a thing you can point to as to why we need tournament expansion. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we do, but I think that the people that are pro tournament expansions are going to point to this because they're like, how the fuck you put Virginia in and leave out? How does the Big East, which yeah. is the second best conference in college basketball behind the Big 12, um, how does it get well, three no, bids? It gets half as many bids. You don't as, think the SEC is damn good? I didn't say the SEC wasn't damn good. I said the Big East was this, probably the second best. I would say SEC is pretty good. I would just I would think the SEC would be better than the big the Big East. Yeah, you probably would think that. But you, would. I, I I like watching the SEC a lot. Yeah. yeah, but I the Big East got three bids. That's crazy. That's three crazy. bids. Is, three bids is wild. That's crazy. When the mountain and I, the, I hear Mountain West, Mountain West people uh, are saying they got screwed and they did, but they also didn't get screwed because they got six in. Yeah, they got double the amount. Of yeah, teams it's, that's, the that's really weird too. I'm trying to figure out where everybody's landed on the Mountain West because it does feel like half the people are saying no respect for the Mountain West. Well, they the did get underseeded, like, right? You got twice as many bids as the Big East, like New Mexico, which uh, New Mexico is an 11 seed. Uh, what, what are the all, what are the seeding problems? With Colorado. The, oh, Utah State at, at the eight nine at the eight line. They they think they should be better than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, they f- they feel like I mean the the Mountain West had a great non conference schedule or non conference performance like all those teams I think it was the only conference that entered conference play where every team was above five hundred. Um, but yeah, I mean historically the Mountain West hasn't been great. It, but I I don't know. It's it, w- the biggest confusion to me is like I don't really know what the fuck we're using as a metric for like uh, th- they're. There are so many metrics, and there are so everyone seems to have a very clear idea how this is going to go down, and yet we never do. And and for a process that is very, very, very transparent, yeah. And they they they, they put out the rankings throughout the season. Dan Gavitt's on uh on television, like as the the pro, he was on television like two days ago as the conference tournaments are going on, saying like, here's where we're at, here's where we need to get to. Everything's very transparent, and yet despite the transparency, it could not be more confusing as to what is valued, what. Uh, what metric they look at? Yeah, what like all of it becomes very confusing as to what we're arguing. What the point of the committee is? Are we using if we're using metrics? Why even have the guys in the room? Why not just have like computers decide it? Why not like come yeah. up with some algorithm that takes all the algorithms and throws it together and do that? And if we're not doing that, then why do we have the algorithms? Why not just have the guys sit down and I'll just like let do Delphi like a, do it? Let Delphi do it. Why not just do a barbershop deal where just guys are like, they fucking suck, dude. Get them out of here and, and do it that way. That's how I would do it. I thought you meant like a barbershop quartet. They would, they, the, they would sing, you didn't make you didn't ma- <laughs> No, I mean like. You've you're, got you're, AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, how we sit around and just like talk shit on teams. But yeah, that's that's how I would. That's how I'd go about doing the committee. So I think, 
I think Virginia, I think the committee got down to 67 teams. They needed one more. And they chose Virginia because of Virginia's appealing style of play. Yeah, that's what it is. They just wanted somebody in there that would give you a game that you really want to watch. Yeah. And you, this has got to be a loss for you because th- for three weeks you were like, do not put them in. Do not put them in. Uh, everybody was like that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> everybody was like that. Because it's not even the style of play. It's that they're not good. Mm-hmm. They're not a good basketball team. They don't, they don't, they haven't really beaten anybody good. They, yeah. They have no good wins. It's it's a it's a very stag. I I, I hate it because I was I was the biggest proponent of Virginia basketball forever. Um, but that was when Virginia basketball was good, and Virginia basketball is not good right now. And uh, it's crazy that they're in the tournament. But I don't know. That means they're probably going to win like three games now. Mm-hmm. Is is that the most egregious thing to you about this bracket? Is the fact that Virginia made yeah, it the Virginia okay, yeah. yeah, that would be the most egregious. I think some of the seeding, as Brandon pointed out, is is strange. Weird. But like whatever. If you're if you're a team that uh, if you're a team that bitches about your draw, you're not a serious national title contender. That's well, my that's my belief. Will um Will Tom is a retire after Michigan State loses Thursday morning? No, but I do think Michigan State will lose Thursday morning. I I, I also think that yeah. I share that opinion. Yeah, uh, I guess me and Evo should just talk the next twenty minutes as as guys with teams in the tournament. So. Well, don't don't exclude Mark. He made the tournament. Yeah, I'm in the NIT, dude. Are they playing? Yeah, good for them. <laughs> um, I actually mean that part. Um, the, here's here's the problem, and Tom Crean railed against this last night. But there are now all of a sudden everybody's opting. All the major teams are opting out of the NIT. They don't want to play in the NIT, right? And this exposes a problem inside the NCAA itself, not really with these teams. The reason they're opting out is they're trying to get to work because you build a team now through the transfer portal, and the transfer portal window opens today. Yeah. So you've got 68 teams that are are going through shoot-around and running practice and doing all this stuff, and then you've got 200 and whatever teams that now are just just on the phone texting, lining up visits and everything for the transfer portal. It's a remarkably crazy timing. It's easy to dunk on the coaches that don't want to play in the NIT and say, like, why would you not want to play basketball? Yeah. This is a great opportunity for your guys. But, like, th- that's an old school way of thinking. The NIT was a very valuable tool back in the day when you could, if you had a young team. Right. Actually, I think I think it's it's valuable for Ohio State. I think we're going to retain a lot of these guys because we hired uh, Diebler, who recruited a lot of the guys. Um, so that's an, that's an instance where I actually am fired up that, that we're going to be able to, like, keep the young core together, keep, get right. more games together, build some momentum going into next year. A lot of these teams, it's not that. They, they're, oh. you're, you're, you're putting guys on the floor that the second you lose the game, they're in the transfer They portal. will never play for you They'll again. They'll never play for you again. Yeah. They want to get out of there. Um, you, you have – most of these and, – and let's face it, if you're in the IT, it's not like you had that great of a roster or something went wrong. So you've got a coach out there probably thinks he has between five to eight spots conservatively yeah. to, to fill on his team, and the way you do it now is through that damn portal, and that portal is open. What's more important, winning however many games it is four, winning four games to finish five. number sixty nine in the country, five games, five I think, yeah, winning five games to finish number sixty nine in the country, or getting a jump on next year, that's yeah. way more important. Yeah, so it's just a fucked up. It, it's it's almost it's a lot like what they do to bowl games and football teams in December where you get done with the season and immediately the portal opens up. You've got a whole bunch of teams getting ready for bowl games and they're having to juggle everything and then you have these others. Why would they go to a 6-6 six and six bowl when they could just get to work on next year's yeah. season? It's the same thing. And it is sad that the NIT, let's be honest, NIT probably won't exist in five years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm but I'm trying to think through all those scenarios. Uh, as as this Fox try Fox is trying to do the thing in Vegas where they just invite all the the power conference teams basically that they have contracts with. But now they don't want to go. But they don't want it. They're not going to want to go. I think they're going to expand the tournament. I think that's inevitable. And I think it, th- those everyone that's like fighting against it. Um, I I, it, I commend you. Like I think that's See, a, I don't that's understand a fine fight. But they they are going to expand it. I don't understand it. Like sixty eight's a lot of fucking teams. Yeah. Six, every team that can win a national title has got to be in this bracket. There's no way they're not in this bracket. There can't be a team from seven, from 69 to 78 or 69 to 85 that can win the national title. That's crazy. That's yeah, but that I I I, I think uh, this year though is 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 going to be the inflection point, and they're just going to say like there were a lot of 
good teams, but there weren't really that good. I don't know. The bubble was so weird this year, and it, and it shrunk. Because uh, wh- whether you think they're good teams or not, like the idea that uh, St. Saint- John's is definitively better than mm-hmm. – a lot of the teams that got in and it, the the fact that the automatic qualifiers like shrink the bubble like that. And then a team like St. John's who yeah. is not going to win the national championship, but maybe deserves a spot. I, I, I think this is going to be an inflection point where they're like, we have to expand the field. I don't necessarily agree with it. I think the conclusion might be to contract the field. I think the conclusion might be instead of trying to get like the St. John's and your, uh, mm-hmm. your providences and your, your Seton halls, who else was, who, who are the one seeds in the, uh, in the, uh, NIT? Nova, Seton Hall, all the all the Big E schools, Indiana State, Indiana State, yeah, Indiana State was never making the NCAA tournament. Um, instead of like getting all those guys in, what if we shrunk the field and kept the Virginias out and the and all that? What if you? What if the only way th- they used to do like you had to win your conference tournament to even make it in? Yeah, right. Like way back in the day, back when you were like fifteen. Well, that was nineteen ninety four, and and they didn't do it like that in nineteen ninety four. It was a straight sixty four team bracket. Arkansas oh. won the Final Four, seventy nine, seventy five over Duke. Okay. Um, you did your show here yesterday, right? Who, yeah. So who's who left their bracket on my sheet? Who who's got the Florida Gators winning the national title? That would be one Liam Blutman. Liam Blutman. Yeah, he said uh, having having your having one of your players have their leg leg snap in half in March is a good omen. Louisville <laughs> Louisville had it happen and they won. He didn't actually say that, but I think I think subconsciously he was thinking it. Louisville had it happen, and they won a national championship. So I think he's these these conference Louisville. tournaments. They'll they'll fool the shit out of you. They don't matter. They, they don't, don't matter. matter at all. And I saw a lot of people bitching, or I saw Auburn people bitching. We won the SEC tournament, and we only got a four seed. And I I, I got to thinking, did you see Auburn's path to winning the SEC tournament? Yeah, they beat South Carolina. Who's Fine team, but certainly they did beat the shit out of them. But yeah, North the, Carolina, but South Carolina's not. That's a six seed in the in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they beat Mississippi State. We're in, but that's uh, we're we're an eight seed, and they beat Florida. So they beat they beat a six, six a eight, seven, eight, and an eight. eight. Yeah, that's not necessarily resume changing. Right, that's not resume changing. That's just winning three basketball games in three days. Um, well, and then you have a team like Iowa State who they beat the snot out of Houston in the Big Twelve championship, and they're. Wasn't a serious debate, but but people were trying to start the debate that should Iowa State get the fourth number one seed over North Carolina? Yeah. Iowa State got the fourth number two seed. As it turns out, yeah. <laughs> they were even on the seed list. They were eight. They weren't even close to the fourth number one seed. Um, so I, I, the, the conference tournaments don't matter at all, and yet they do. The, and yet they're sold as like the most important thing in the world. They matter for the small schools, obviously, because that's how you yeah. get into the dance. But like the the power conference tournaments. Could not, they, and they obviously matter for like Oregon and NC State. If you're a school that's not going to make it otherwise, but winning your conference tournament doesn't do shit for your for your seeding, as it turns out. How do you feel about um, new Ohio State coach? Um, is it Jake? Jake, Jake Diebler. Yeah, I like him. I like him. I like the hire. I was um, before this weekend. I kind of was a negative Nelly about your take and Big Cat's take about. Zach Eady and how he's bad for basketball and how the officials treat him differently. And then I sat down with you guys and I watched the Big Ten tournament. Yeah. And Zach Eady, this Zach Eady experience over the last four years should be studied by school children in the future. <laughs> of like, it's an unexplained phenomenon. Zach Eady is going to be the two time player of the year. And there's nothing wrong. Zach Eady, fine basketball player. He's, he's big, he uses that. Terrific. But the way Big Ten officials officiate his games. It's crazy. Is the damnedest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That game against Wisconsin, a guy just simply blocked him out. Edie just goes flailing with body parts everywhere. They call a foul on the Wisconsin guy. The the blocking foul away from the ball where Edie just tries to run through the lane and the guy the guys are standing there. Yeah. And, and like Nobody gets these calls, and on the other end, he's he's doing this. He's covering people up, and it, I've every, never seen, every post move he he this is takes crazy. it high this turns. Crazy. I've yeah. I've studied his game yeah. very closely, and now that I pointed it out, maybe some of you watching Purdue might notice it. He posts up, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to keep a you got to keep a sharp eye on this. I'm gonna throw you the ball here. Yeah, he throw, catches the ball. Okay. All right. All right. Now he does again. Blink and you might miss it. Yeah. Dribble, left elbow, boom baby hook right yeah and that seems to be <laughs> if you watch a purdue game you might see that once or twice 
in a game, and he takes his elbow, and he, yeah. like, he has one post move, and it's take your elbow and it, fucking throw it in a guy's neck turned. and chest. Yeah. Yeah. And I, then I saw it's, a, stat. it's a foul called every single time. It's crazy. I saw a stat. Um, he played Michigan State twice this year, I think. Maybe three times. Twice, I believe. Um, he was called for three fouls in two games against Michigan State. It's crazy. He drew 33. Did, did you hear what I just said? He 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 drew 33 fouls against Michigan State. Yeah. He was called for three. And Purdue it's fans just, will say with a straight face, we'll stop fouling him then. It's it's so <laughs> it's so weird because Zach, there's been other tall players before. This is not the first tall player we've ever seen. Yeah. But Big Ten officials act like, oh my God, I have no idea. It's it's a foul every time somebody breathes on him. And usually throughout history, I remember Shaq had this problem where Shaq would just get fouled relentlessly. He'd just get beaten up and beaten up and beaten up, and, and it would be hard for him to get calls. Edie gets every single call. Every call. And I, I've never seen anything like it. And it, it creates this weird kind of dichotomy in that Purdue, in the grand scheme of things, is certainly not a blue blood in basketball. They're not, they're not Duke. They're not Kentucky. They're not Kansas. Yet they get preferential treatment – why? I have no idea. Welcome to the Big Ten experience. And you've got Purdue fans, years. which, by the way, Purdue fans have tiny dick energy like the rest of college uh, athletics, uh, every other fan base. They've got tiny dick energy because if these calls were happening against them, they would want to march on the on the headquarters of NCAA. Yeah. They would absolutely freak out. If they played Michigan and Michigan got the whistle Purdue gets against Purdue, they would they would break down. Of course down. they would, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the play where uh, – Tyler, I think it was Tyler Wall. Yeah, uh, goes up for a shot, and Edie's like reaching yeah. his arms, and then it goes out of bounds, and they go, just called it out of bounds. Of wall. I don't, uh, I don't get it. I, I haven't gotten it for a while. Um, but this is what makes them vulnerable in the NCAA tournament, right? Because yes, you you're not going to have Big Ten officials who I guess spend spend their nights laying on their belly just writing Edie with hearts around it. You're not going to have Big Ten officials. You're going to have actual college basketball officials who are going to be like. Well, that wasn't we don't, a foul. We don't give a fuck about this guy. Yeah. yeah we're not here to protect this guy. But uh, also, it's the, the most disappointing thing to me is that Purdue, I've, I was hoping that Purdue this year would learn from their lesson from last year, which is they were so reliant on Zach Eady that you get to the NCAA tournament and uh, it's a guard game. And, and fairly Dickinson was, as Dave kept yelling last year during the game, that we're too small for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but they just kept they just keep dumping it in Edie. They just spam Edie over and over and over. And I thought that they would learn from the mistakes, and their guards would be older this year. And they get Lance Jones in the transfer portal, who's fucking awesome, and and is they have a better roster. But now that you look up and and and, and mid March and the bracket is here, Purdue is the exact same team they were last year. They they because uh, the refs in the Big Ten give Edie a favorable whistle. Yeah. The way they play is the exact same, where they're just spamming. They they have stretches where they're not, but by the time March rolls around, they've just figured out they're like, fuck it, we just got to dump it to Zach every single time down the floor, which is fine in theory until you play a team that's like hitting threes on you. Uh, suddenly, Zach Eady's not getting these calls. Um, yeah, I, I have Purdue going. I have Purdue going pretty far in my bracket, but they're of course they're going to flame out the exact same way. Because well, you can't. There, there's no way you can win a national championship dumping it into the post over and over and over to a guy who has one move. He has one move. Well, the, no, no. You're, He's got no back. You're being unfair. You're being unfair. He has two moves because uh, most of the times he turns to the left. Occasionally he turns to the right. Occasionally he will turn to the right. So you're kind of shortchanging him. He, I do he think catches the, the ball outside of the, po outside of the paint. He immediately is just looking to do a dribble handoff. He, he doesn't even look at the basket. It's crazy. Um, the committee does have kind of a sense of humor, though, because you have – Matt Painter and Purdue, who traditionally choke in this spot, and their two seed is Rick Barnes in Tennessee, who traditionally choke in this spot. And who's their three seed, Brandon? Uh, that would be the Creighton team. Blue Jays. And how yeah. many Final Fours does Creighton have in their history, would you say, Brandon? Uh, Nan. Yes, zero. And their four who's is their Kansas, their five is Gonzaga. This is the worst Kansas team Bill Self has probably ever had. Uh, Gonzaga – was maybe not all the way on the bubble, but kind yeah. of sort of on the bubble. Well, they were like up until ago. like February, and they got like they got a month right, ago. Yeah. Um, but they're playing better. Gonzaga is playing better. Yeah. Um, but this is one of the worst teams Mark Few's ever had. Um, what, which which so bracket do you think is the uh, bracket of death? UConn swears it's them. I think Hurley was. Uh, give me. Uh, well, this one's. Give me one of, just give me the, one. Just here. That. Give me. Give, give me that one. Give me this one. Oh. Give me this one. Give me the. 
Uh, bracket of death is is the East. Yeah, you I think, think it's, it's UConn. East. I think it's the East. Um, but yeah, you you have you you have four you have four of the top ten on Ken Palm. Yeah, in that bracket, I That's think crazy. the South the South is pretty nasty too. I think uh, both the West for Carolina and the Midwest for Purdue are a little less. But I think the West is the wide open one. The West stinks. The I think H- is- Houston catching, um, you know, Marquette, whatever. But you've got Kentucky in there as the three. You've got Duke, who's talented as the four. You got Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, I guess it is the East. The East by far. It's the East by far. Um, the South is the set. I, I would do East, South, uh, Midwest, West, probably. Yeah, because that two and three be- of Iowa State and Illinois, that's nasty. And then Auburn is the fucking four. The West is the prime candidate for the. the- the chaos, the double, digit the, seed. the double digit seed in the final four, the um, just blows wide open. Uh, I I pick Mississippi State to be North Carolina. Well, you I know that t- for you. You know who Tom? Thank you. You know who Tom Crean picked for the final four out of the West? Well, I pick I pick Mississippi State to beat North Carolina. Thank you. Okay, appreciate that. But who did Tom Crean pick to Mississippi State to make the final four? So me picking pick, me picking Mississippi Tom State Crean to beat North Carolina. Cut you, yeah, Tom doesn't mean anything to you. It does. It's Tom Crean. All I'm saying is, so I need to pick Mississippi State to win the. You took a step. You took a step forward in my eyes, but Tom Crean um, absolutely did cuck you, and now I love him. <sighs> Damn, that is, <laughs> that's the that's the look of a confident man right there in his picks. <laughs> that's a, that's the look of a man who's. He's looking. At, he's like, what did uh, I just do? What? <laughs> what? Wait, what? How many teams are in the Final Four? What? UConn, Tennessee is a. Uh, he's got. One, Two one seeds, a two seed, and Mississippi State. All right, all right, Tom. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> we also play if we beat Michigan State, which you know we play literally Mr. March. Then we would have to play North Carolina and Charlotte, which could yeah. it, that cannot be fun. There's no way that's no. going to shake out in our favor. Has an SEC team ever played a blue blood team from North Carolina in Charlotte in the NCAA tournament? Is that who beat Duke there? Did Arkansas beat Duke there in 1994 in the national? Championship? Oh, I don't know where that Final Four was. It was in Charlotte. Was it? Yeah. Do you know off the top of your head where every Final Four was? Uh, it's not something I've really studied, but I might know. I don't know. Test it. I might just know. Okay. Where was the 2005 Final Four? That was St. Louis. I wow. Just, that was I just, quick. I do remember them. I don't like where study it. Where was the 2001 I, Final Four? That was Minneapolis. So maybe I do know. Do you know that you know? Maybe I know them. I didn't know where's that the, I knew where's them. The, where's the 1999 Final Four? 99. Uh, on beat Duke. That one is harder. Was that 2000 was Indy? <laughs> Not yeah. Maybe I don't know. 99 was. All right, let's go for. No, go. 99 was uh, like Tampa. Yep. 99 was. You got the list. All right, yeah. All right let's keep. All right, where's oh. 2002? 2002 was Atlanta because I remember that because uh, Indiana made it, <laughs> and I that was my favorite. Are we just unlocking a skill right now. I think now? we are. I I didn't 2000. Hold on, let me just go. Let 2003 me, was 2003, when uh, Syracuse beat Kansas. That was. I I also see the logos in my yeah. head when I think about these, and that helps because yeah. that was that was New Orleans because that had the yeah that had the jazz. Is that correct, Connor? Stop yep. me if I'm wrong. I remember 1990 for that reason because they had the Rocky Mountains that was in Denver. Yeah. Um. O four was San Antonio. O five, you already said. O six. O six was George Indy. Mason, right? O six was Indy, right? Indy been getting that many of them. Indy, yeah, dude. Indy gets all of them. Now, do you remember two thousand seven? Two thousand seven, I remember well. It was Georgia. It was the state of Georgia, the entire state. I think most of the games were played in Atlanta, though. The, okay. The Georgia Dome, yeah. The Georgia Dome. Well, championship game was played in Albany, Georgia. But. Um, two thousand eight was San Antonio again, because I because that that ha- that was the logo with the cowboy hat on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, two thousand nine. Mo's. Was Detroit because Michigan State versus North Carolina in the championship, and and Michigan State fans thought that they had the home court advantage, and Carolina was like, we have one of the best teams of all time. Moses, Moses is waking up. Moses is bored by this. He's ready to do his bracket. Um, uh, ten was Indianapolis. Correct. Yep. Eleven was Houston. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Twelve was, um, who was twenty twelve? That was Kentucky. Anthony. That was back in New Orleans. Yes. 2013 was Louisville. Louisville in – that one's a little tougher for me. That was in Texas somewhere. No. I got that one wrong. Was it Dallas? Mm-mm. Tampa. North Texas. That one was in Tampa? Where was that? Phoenix? Phoenix? Back at the Georgia Dome. That was back in Georgia now. So it just went Indy, Atlanta every year? Yeah. Yeah. You're just – yeah, dude. 
it's an indie all the time, as it should be. Yeah, but in all 50 states, it's just basketball. <laughs> you got a lot to learn, but <laughs> 2014 uh, was Dallas, by the way. 2014 was You were Dallas. just a year ahead. I was yeah. a year ahead. Evo, can I ask you a question before I – or actually after I tell the people about Cars.com? Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace connects car shoppers with their perfect car, celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars. Wherever life takes you next or whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on Cars.com. Up to 50,000 cars are added daily to Cars.com. Shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. Find your next possibility on Cars.com. Where to next? Evo, can I just... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> TJ, can you just look at the sheet here? Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Is this wasteful at all? Uh, yeah, very. Uh, we ran out of printer paper or standard size printer paper in the office this morning. What so. do we have? This? Why, do, why do we have this? What is so this? all we have is legal pad or legal this paper. This is legal this paper? Is, this is how, like, attorneys, this is how they... I don't really know life, what the actual so if, so practice so, of Was somebody buying is. a house and they had to print out a bunch of legal paper and we had to have this? You want to <laughs> know something funny? We have even bigger paper than that in the fourth drawer. We have bigger paper than this? Mm -hmm. I want to go bigger tomorrow. I want you want the biggest paper we have? Biggest paper possible. Biggest, okay. Bring me your biggest paper. I would like to get progressively bigger every day. Like if we have to send Connor to buy some, whatever, we'll just go. Okay. Um, what's our plan for this show? You want to fill out Moses bracket? Moses bracket. Uh, yeah, we'll do Moses bracket, and then and then after that, we'll just do all the silly stuff. Yeah. Or, so how do you want to do this? You're going to get out there with yeah, him. I'll do it. I'll do it. So we have a blank bracket here, and how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this with yeah. Let me let me set the stage here. Yeah, I've been doing so. Moses is thirteen. Um, he's an old pup. Mm -hmm. He's uh, same age as Tommy Walker. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Whoa, the kindred spirits maybe. <laughs> um, I'll make I, you. A, I'll make you a guarantee right now. I know he's older. If he ever leaves this this earth, I'll put Tommy down at the same time. Okay. That's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take them in together. So so we're both. No no, no no. We'll we'll spin the horses. One of them has to go. <laughs> <laughs> We'll take them both behind the bar and spin the horses. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tommy. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this with Moses his whole life. Um, he is the most ball watchingest dog in in this country. Um, when I leave the house, I put on college basketball games for him. Yeah, uh, there, there. You, you will not find a dog that's watched more ball than him. His uh, his highlights through the years include calling Florida Gulf Coast to the Sweet 16 mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2021, he picked VCU to his Final Four. VCU tested positive for COVID, didn't get a play. That kind of broke him, and he hasn't been the same since. Okay. So he's so this is so maybe he puts it back together. I don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping. I hope we we find his his enthusiasm for this. But we've been doing this for now. This will be the twelfth year, I guess, we've done this, and uh, he usually beats me. So yeah. I I do this as a way to. Uh, when people get mad at me for my bracket picks, which I put out with Jake Marsh, by the way, yeah, you can go watch that show. Um, if you hate my bracket picks, I then just shrug my shoulders. I'm like, you should have listened to my dog. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do this. All right, let's do this. We well, got the doggy treats. Moses aware of the treats. The treats are open. So we're starting in the east. He's locked in. Oh, yeah, we're starting. We, start we do. Okay. So the other thing, I just based off tradition, we always. When I started it, 16 seeds didn't beat one seed, so we always just advanced the one in the first round. All right, so we're skipping the so, 16 So uh, should a 16 over one happen, blame me. Don't blame Moe's. Okay. I, I, that's that's how we've always done it, and that's how uh, all right. we keep the tradition. So, Connor, if you want to go ahead and put all the, 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 the ones through. Show off that board, too. Oh, this by the way, this is the board. best thing you brought in today. Look at this. Yeah, I had that in my, uh, in my <gasps> bedroom when I was a kid. Mosey's fired up. We got him. Yeah, great board. Um, All right, so let's start in the east. So we do, we'll do left hand as the favorite, right hand as the upset, but based off seeding. All right, so that makes sense. Eight FAU, nine Northwestern in the east. All right. Uh, so left hand is favorite. So left will be eight, right will be nine. Yeah. Okay. Real bud. Sit, 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 most. All right. Oh wow! Just so he's got FAU. We got an FAU UConn matchup. There in the, so now we have uh, five seed San Diego State against twelve seed UAB. Oh, upset! Upset! <laughs> upset! UAB, and I kind of like that pick too. Yeah. We now have four seed Auburn against thirteen seed Yale. 
Wow, Upset City over here. Some would call it Pupset City, if you know what I mean. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What's that? All right, we got uh, six seed BYU against 11 seed Duquesne. Upset, uh, up. What's happening in their right hand there? The upsets. This is chaos. Uh, number three seed Illinois, 14 Moorhead State. Oh, uh, he's laying down. Too. <laughs> I can't. Well, I took the favorite. Okay. All right, so that's that's Illinois. All right, two more left in this bracket. We've got uh, seven Washington State against ten Drake. Okay, go. Okay. Uh oh, this, this is a tough this pick. Is a <laughs> tough pick. Bet overtime in this game. <laughs> seven Washington State, ten Drake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, he's oh in. man, oh, this is tough. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, this is tough. Okay, okay, go ahead. Huh. Come on, Moses. <laughs> I mean, it's a close. It's a it's a close matchup. Double overtime. Drake's hot. Washington State finished second in the Pac-12. This is, this is a tough game to pick. Okay, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's thinking about Drake in my elite eight. I think this is going to be an incredible <laughs> reveal. Okay, pick one. Okay, uh, go. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Oh, oh Drake! Drake. Wow. Drake. Drake. <laughs> and. <laughs> to see the Iowa State against 15 South Dakota State. Okay. This one shouldn't be that tough, Moe's, if we're being honest. Moe's, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look, at, look up. Nope. Look up. Look up. All right. You're going upset. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that is a bracket. That, that bracket is uh... – <laughs> that, that, There's a lot going on in the East. Now, question, question, question. Do we continue with the other, other – yeah, we bra- State. We're going to the next bracket, and then we'll come back. Okay. Uh, so, we'll skip North Carolina. We'll go – this is a big one, Moe's. Number eight, Mississippi State against number nine. I know. I did. Against number nine, Michigan State. Atta boy. Yeah. Atta boy. Dogs. The dogs pick the dogs. <laughs> Five St. Mary's, 12 Grand Canyon. Oh, a second. Oh. He loves the 12s this yeah. year. Four Alabama, 13 Charleston. Okay. Oh, my goodness. He's loving the upsets. You okay? No, I'm old too. We're all getting old. Six Clemson, eleven New Mexico. Clemson. Oh, Clemson! Okay. Wow, I actually like the upset there, Mose. But you're just a you're a dog. Three Baylor, fourteen Colgate. He doesn't like them on the floor, huh? He doesn't seem to like them on the floor. Okay, take one. Take one. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Well, the thing is with Colgate. Yeah. They I mean, haven't won an NCAA tournament no, yet. No, but they're a talented they're team. Talented and they've made a lot of tournaments. They're going to break through at some point. Is this the year? Oh, he's Take one, Moses. Take one. Nope. Okay. Yep. Baylor, Colgate. Moses, you want to pass? Moses. He won. Go. Oh, he almost okay. did. Okay. Go. <laughs> Go. Well, you're going to pick, you're gonna have to pick him up. Bud. It's okay. Take your time. <laughs> I mean, just filling out your bracket's a big deal. Speak, speak, speak. Okay, good boy. Oh wow! Oh, that just oh. triggered him. Okay, so he's got oh, Colgate. Yeah. <laughs> Colgate. All right. Colgate first. Okay. Number seven, Dayton. Number ten, Nevada. Wow, Nevada. Nevada. Should we should we switch at some point? Go right. The favorites or. Yeah, I'll do. I'll do it like this. You want me to switch? You want me to no, not now. Because let's finish this bracket. Two Arizona, fifteen Long Beach State. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. He's uh, got a method, dude. He knows. All right, so we go up to the. We're now in the South region. We have eight Nebraska, nine Texas A and M. Okay, Nebraska. yeah, Nebraska's a good team. I mean, I got big ten bias. Uh, five Wisconsin, twelve JMU. <gasps> uh oh, the dogs. Dogs. <laughs> dogs. Boyibo. I think we should have just put all the dogs through. Number four, uh, four Duke, 13 Vermont. Oh, good, wow, good, good. Wow, cat amounts. Is that a dog? Oh, uh, no, that's a cat, that right? Makes sense. Oh, man. Uh, six, Texas Tech, 11 NC State. Texas Tech. Okay. Did he? Get the left one. I, I thought he tried to get both of them. No, he does try to get both of them. Okay. That, yeah. Texas Tech. Um, three, Kentucky, 14 Oakland. All right. Kentucky. So he's got kind of chalky on this one. Yeah. Um, seven Florida, ten Boise State or Colorado. 
Okay, he likes the Gators. Gators. Florida. All right. And then two Marquette, 15 Western Kentucky. Really likes the favorites in this. Yeah. Um, skipping Purdue, we go to number eight, Utah State, nine, TCU. Okay. We're gonna Any sprinkle. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, that left hand is getting. Uh, number five, Gonzaga, 12, McNeese. First five seed to win for him. Dogs. Yep, you're right. Um, four, Kansas, 13, Samford. Sanford's dogs, but they lose wow. to Kansas. Um, five, South Carolina, 11, oh no, six, South Carolina, 11, Oregon. Wow. He, he, he deked me there. I thought he was going three, Creighton, 14, Akron. Most, most. Oh, 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 oh Akron. Yes. yes. It's an Ohio dog. It's yeah. An Ohio dog. And then seven, Texas, ten, Virginia, Colorado State, Texas. Texas. Horns up. <laughs> and we've got two, Tennessee, 15, St. Peter's. Uh, we gotta got to get him going. Yep, and he's got Tennessee. All right, so, so we got the first round here. Um, now we swing back. Oh, he's got to do a little maintenance there. A little itchy, <laughs> a little itchy face. Where are we at? That's a good dog. Now, He's got UConn, FAU. 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 Most, come on. Come on, lock in. <laughs> lock in. Oh, UConn oh, goes that down. FAU. And that makes sense. They got tournament experience. Yeah. UAB against <laughs> Yale. UAB. UAB. To the Sweet 16. Duquesne against six, uh, 11 Duquesne, 3 Illinois. He's just a big Barstool Invitational fan. Yeah. <laughs> that, was got, Illinois? that was Illinois? That was, oh, that was Duquesne. Oh, that was Duquesne. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Got Drake and South Dakota State, the ten against the fifteen. All the dogs. What's South Dakota State? Drake, South Dakota Jackrabbits. State. Jackrabbit. Great mascot. Close, close. There was a Jackrabbit video game. <laughs> wow, South Dakota State. Mm. South Dakota State mystery of Noah Friedel. We don't fuck with them. Uh, North Carolina and Mississippi State. Oh, he oh. took a lot of effort to get, pick UNC there. All right. Grand Canyon, Charleston. Grand Canyon being the higher seed here. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Clemson against 14 seed Colgate. Okay, that's Clemson. Clemson. And two seed Arizona, seven, 10 seed Nevada. Wow. 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 Wow, wow. <laughs> um, one seed Houston, eight seed Nebraska. Oh, down goes Houston. Crazy. One seed's losing? Yep. Yeah. The first weekend? The top two? Uh, Five seed, no, I'm sorry, 12 seed JMU, 13 seed Vermont. Mm. JMU? No. No, Vermont. Vermo oh, oh no. Vermont. Vermont. Sorry, Ebo. Um, number six, Texas Tech. Number three, Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh, he likes the Wildcats, huh? Watch a lot of this <laughs> yeah. Um, seven Florida, two Marquette. Okay, Marquette. Okay. Okay. Um, one Purdue, eight Utah State. No, oh, they Purdue, Purdue gets through. Okay. Five Gonzaga, four Kansas. Kansas. That's Kansas. Kansas. That feels pretty chalky. That this region is chalky. South uh six South Carolina, fourteen Akron. So South Carolina getting that through. And then we have last second round matchup. Seven Texas, two Tennessee. <laughs> oh, Texas. Okay. All right, we're in the sweet sixteen now. We have um eight seed Florida Atlantic and twelve seed UAB. It really likes UAB. This UAB team. This UAB team. Uh, 11 Duquesne and 15 South Dakota State. Wow, what a run Jack by Rabbit. South Dakota State. Jack versus UAB. Um, oh, number, I'm like Dom either. Number one, North Carolina. Number 12, Grand Canyon. Okay. Carolina. Yeah. Um, number six, Clemson. Number 10, Nevada. Okay. Clemson. All ACC uh, final there. Um, number eight, Nebraska. And number 13, Vermont. 
Nebraska. I mean, that's possible. All right, we got Nebraska to the Elite Eight. We have number three seed Kentucky, number two seed Marquette. This one's tough. Three and a two. Go and it's Marquette. Marquette. Okay. We have number one, Purdue, number four, Kansas. 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 Making a run. And then number six, South Carolina, number seven, Texas. Oh, that's South Carolina, yeah. So I'll pause right here and let his his, his face get. Uh, our Elite Eight is UAB, South Dakota State, North Carolina, Clemson, Nebraska, Marquette, Kansas, South Carolina. Wow. wow. All right, let's get to the final four. All right, here we go. We have 12 seed UAB against 15 seed South Dakota State. I'm going to put them on the four for this. These okay. Are good decisions. Take your time over. Okay. All right. UAB versus. That's UAB on the left. On my left, South Dakota State on this my. This one's UAB. Yep. This one's South Dakota Correct. State. Correct. Correct. Go ahead, Moses. Whenever you're ready. Speak. Speak. Let's go. <laughs> Talk it out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, this one's tough. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Okay. So UAB all the way to the final four. UAB to the final four. Uh, all right. ACC matchup. Number one seed, North Carolina. Number whatever, Clemson. Six. Six. Carolina's on Carolina. Carolina there. Clemson, Clemson there. there. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> Go ahead, boy. I know Clemson won in Chapel Hill. Yep. It makes it confusing. Yep. Uh, Carolina's. Carolina's a one seed, though. <laughs> Clemson, do it again. Where are these teams? Where's this game being played? This one is in Los Angeles. Okay, so no real advantage for either. <laughs> TJ. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mose. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Speak. 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 Talk it out. Talk it out. Okay. Now take a pick. Take a pick. Okay. Okay. Take he's, he's eyeing Clemson. His eyes are going to Clemson. But now he's coming back towards North Carolina. Make a pick. Pick one. Make him speak one more time. It's okay. Take your time. Speak. There's no hurry here. Talk it out. Speak. Speak. Family. Speak. There you go. Oh, so oh. North Carolina. The one seed gets all the way through. We have um, eight seed in Nebraska against two seed in Marquette. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Talk this one out. To <laughs> we, have Mar we have – Speak. Actually, Marquette's now on the left and Nebraska's on the right. Yeah. yeah. Marquette, Marquette Nebraska. Nebraska. Go ahead. Yeah. Are you out of treats? No, I got it. Okay. Go ahead, Mose. Speak. Talk it out. Speak. Speak. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of stake here in the bracket at this point. We're in the elite eight. Speak, Mose. Speak. Speak. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> That's one. Yeah. Oh, Nebraska to the Nebraska final, to four. final four. They've never won an NCAA tournament game in program history. Um, Moses says no matter. Four seeded Kansas against six seeded South Carolina. This one feels like oh, he goes easier. straight to it. He's going straight Kansas. To it. Did, not, did not need to think about that one at all. So your final four, according to Moses Titus, UAB, North Carolina, Nebraska, and Kansas. All right. All right. So sem semifinal number one. It is 12-seeded UAB, one number one seed, North Carolina. This one is North Carolina. Yep. This one is UAB. Yep. Okay, go ahead, Moses. He's really loved this UAB team from the start, but he's yeah. he's also been very, very vocal in his support for North Carolina. Close, close right here. Speak, speak. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. First yeah, time. it's the. You had to uh, say, I think you had that to one's going to overtime. He took both. <laughs> I think you had to apologize to UAB for that's what that was. You, so I North Carolina, North Carolina playing for a national title. This is Kansas, Nebraska. They will play uh, old Big Twelve foes. Kansas, Nebraska. So Nebraska being an eight seed, they will be on the right, and Kansas being a four seed will be on the left. Okay, buddy, ready? Okay. Does right to Kansas. Loves this Kansas. Right to Kansas. Unbelievable. He's got North Carolina, Kansas. <laughs> he's, say, yeah. he's got a matchup of blue bloods in Houston. So it's one seed North Carolina, four seed Kansas, 
This is for the national championship. The national championship. I'm going to go. Are you going to go a big treat here? A little, slightly bigger. Like he said a lot today. I'm not trying to give him back. Yeah. Here, we're going to go a little bit bigger here. So we got to make sure they're equal size. This is a big pick. Yeah. And he's locked Huge in. Pick. Huge pick, Moses. For the national championship. On the left is North Carolina. Yep. On the right is Kansas. Kansas. He's eyeing yep. North Carolina. He's eyeing North Carolina big. Oh, no, you. you hold on. I'm yeah, gonna, okay. I'm going to make right. it fair. We're going to lift his chin. All right. I need some eye contact, Moses. Yep. Got the eyes. Now it's a fresh start right. once he gets down Go. there. Whatever you're ready, Moses. Right, so he's looking for him. And, okay. All right. This is the national championship, folks. Feels like he's, he's thinking Two. Two. Blue Blood programs, oh, speak. integral to the fabric of college basketball, oh, no. and it comes down to this. He's talking about it. He's talking about it. Yeah. Oh. The Ladies and gentlemen, oh. Tar Heels. Good job, buddy. That's Gotta be honest, Mo's kind of chalk. Kind of chalky. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> he picked North Carolina to win the national the championship. Seed. That's. <laughs> he knows ball. There you have it. That's uh, that's Moses. There's Good job, the, Moses. There's the Moses bracket. Way to go, Moses. Um, he will beat me. I promise you that. Yeah. Uh, if we enter these in any pools, he will finish above me. So if you're looking for any help with picks, I would recommend following that. So instead of following mine. Once a year, for 13 years now, when Moses sees a bracket come come out, he knows that treats are. He's gonna eat a thousand treats. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> he wants the tournament field expanded. I actually don't feel like that's that crazy of a bracket he put together. Well, they, it, some, it was some, crazy at first. Then he settled in. He's got some wild upsets, but, like, I, I actually think he I mean, be all right. That Midwest ain't bad. The Midwest has uh, Kansas beating South Carolina. And then, of course, you got North Carolina Clemson, which I, I don't know how good Clemson is, but I can see North Carolina uh, yeah. going. Right. Yep. Well. UAB, though. He he likes this UAB team. He was I Andy will say, good coach. I will say he watched the entirety of the American uh, tournament, and I think that might be swaying him. He might have the recency bias. Um, good job, buddy. Go. Twin Peaks is the ultimate sports lodge with wall-to-wall -wall TVs for every fan. The Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge is now open. Fill out your bracket today at TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. Every lodge has a winner. There's a $50 gift card for top bracket at every lodge, and the best bracket overall wins free Twin Peaks for a year. The perfect bracket wins $2 million. Is it is it 10 already? 9.55. You, you, hold on, let me. Catch scenic views of every game all tournament long at the number one sports bar. Enter the Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge today at TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. Um, Mr. Blutman. Yeah, I'm here. You, you you've bar you've barged in on the show. I didn't know what time I was supposed to come in for, you know, soup. But we're not doing soup yet. Have you been doing the ticker? I've put a request up there, long ago, but it never went out. Mm. We might need right. you. We might need to deputize you for something else. Okay. They're starting the uh, Bracket Buster show soon. Mm-hmm. And we're up. Or we're, we're going to be called up. Eventually. We know the order. We don't know. The we order. don't know the it's order. Random it's, random. it's a random. It's ping pong balls. So, will you just go out and cross off the teams? So when we go out there, we'll know who to. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to put you to work. No, no, no. It's all good. I'm oh, we could make Cody do that, or we could have. We could ask Cody. Should to be being done. I went there. to work for the. I think Cody's thing, sick. Cody's yeah. sick. Yeah, he's home sick. I thought I saw him. He was here last night. Oh, I saw him last night. Um, wait, Blutman. I asked you last night to do a bracket of soups. Did you do them? Why did you? Because <laughs> I, I thought I thought it was gonna be pulled up quicker than than yeah. There. Super super duper dance. Uh, did you make the graphics and everything? Uh, we could say I did. Did you make the graphics and everything? Okay. All right. Um. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they'll they'll just cross out. You stay in here with us. You stay in here with us. You don't have to go do that. Oh, I kind of want to do this. Oh, you go do that then. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. No, I, he's got me in a pretzel. Yeah, he's got me. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going. I'm enjoying this. If you'd like to go out there and do that, you go do that. I wanted to see the presentation play out. I did want to see that, but do the suit presentation. <laughs> I don't know what's going. Let's on. have you do the suit pres presentation. It just goes by itself. 
Jay's got pulled up. He's got to click a few buttons and it goes. And it's, All right, we'll do this your presentation. You're not going to walk us through it? We'll do it without you. Is there audio? Uh, <laughs> I wanted there to be audio. I couldn't figure it out. Got it. All right, just, just well, let's go ahead and... <laughs> I don't know. This is the most perplexed I've been on this show. I mean, this is what happens. <laughs> well, you're just, so, you're just lucky you weren't here. For yesterday. those who missed it, we did Brandon and me, Brandon, and Jake Marsh did the bracket reveal show. Um, Great job. During man. which, the last 10 seconds, Brandon <laughs> just threw out. A bomb. For reasons unbeknownst to probably Brandon <laughs> as well. You just said, tomorrow, mostly sports, Blutman's going to do his. Soup. Bracket of soups. <laughs> Didn't give a time or anything, so I'm very confused about what time that was supposed to be at. Hence why I'm here before 10. <laughs> Bloodman then breaks the news to us that he does not eat soup. Is I looked over. With soups. I looked over at right when we ended the show, and I saw Bloodman, and I was like, fuck, give him something to do. And I said, soup bracket. Soup bracket. And you did it. Yeah, it took two hours to create this. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Connor, you kind of got lucky. Had you been in my line of vision last night, you would have been asked to make the soup bracket. Probably. Why was it soup? Why'd you go to soup? Are you mad that you're not making the soup bracket? No, not at all. I, I've okay, because tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, get ready for Connor Griffin's sandwich bracket. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sixty. I want 68. I don't want 64. No, no, no. That's 64 bullshit. Don't put a fucking hot dog on there. Don't you put a fucking hot dog on there. And I want first four out. Just because I, I think it's important we for, need all fans, sandwiches. <laughs> for all the fans of those sandwiches Bubbles. to know where they stand. I dabbled with the idea of a first four soups, but I couldn't get them. <laughs> I, I broadened my soup knowledge so much and forgot so much already, I couldn't get right. the, the full six. Now, keep in mind, I just did this on a whim at the end, so yeah. who knows what it's going to bring us, but <laughs> it, could, it, could, it could be great. <laughs> um, so, are you ready to present yep. it? You're, you're Jim Nance. No, you're – who is he? Uh, Greg Gumble. You're Greg Gumble. And let's meet the team. Well, let's meet the soup. <laughs> Get ready to learn soup, bud. Uh, <laughs> the. <laughs> this is the one soup region. And here we go. Let's meet those soups. What do you mean one soup? Ooh, it is sized weird. What What does one soup? Also, mean? why did we pick a font that is very difficult to read? Is it difficult to read? Is this I thought lobster it was, font. Just, I thought it was a bit fancy. Okay. All right, focus. What does one soup mean? Number one soup. Like, it was just the first number. Like, this is the first region. What? It's just <laughs> simply the first region. Is the second region the two region? Two soup. Three soup. Four <laughs> soup. I would... All, right. All right, let's go through the one soup One soup bracket. <laughs> All right. All right. You just go with um, out here. You got number one ramen against number uh, number 16, the winner of pickle or serzanina. Yep. Okay. Number five, Miso against 12. <laughs> <laughs> what carp. matchups stand out to you guys? What, what, it, miso against Carp? Yeah. What's Carp? It's a Czech soup. Okay. Malasek might know a thing or two. Not sure. Not sure. Number four, Tomato Bisque. It's number 13, She Crab. Wild disrespect to She Crab soup, by the way. I, Wild disrespect. I thought that was kind of a meme soup that I didn't think was actually good. I saw it on the, the Wikipedia and was like, well... This is just a funny soup. I didn't know it's real. Like people eat it, so it, maybe it's an undersea at thirteen. Good mid major program out there in the soup world, but thirteen. They're scary though, so you should be happy about that draw for she crab. Sixteen, 16 Manhattan clam chowder against eleven pork blood. Mm, yeah, pork blood. Forget where it's from. Possibly Polish. I could have completely forgot what is, that. What uh, is happening? The three seed lobster stew against fourteen water zooey? Yeah, I forget where that's from. Asia perhaps. <laughs> Seven seed Raton against Goat Meat Pepper? Yeah. Okay. I love Greg Gumble doing that. Uh, if he did this too, it's like, and they'll be playing Samford. Forget where that front, where they're from. Could be California. Could be Montana. We're not really sure. All right, you have the two chicken noodle against fifteen cream of broccoli. This. Yeah, that's a matchup that everybody's getting a bit excited about. Testy there, cream of broccoli. Not going to be able to pull off the upside, in my opinion. We're not going to fill out the whole bracket. Maybe we'll just tweet it out and let people do their own or something. But uh, well, if, if I'm looking at this bracket. 
I think Miso could make a run. I think five seed Miso yeah. is is. Why aren't you hyping up she? Crab? I also think she crab is probably the best soup in here. I, you wow. could see a double digit wow. seed come she out. She crab here. at thirteen. Um, I'll be honest, I can't read any of this. One because the font's awful. Two, the, the camera camera's all in my way. Clam chowder is also going to be hell to deal with. That's the one seed ramen. That's correct. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. ramen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, the two, two soup, soup region. Soup region. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what we got? Why did we change the fonts? (laughs) Number one, French onion (laughs) against 16 seed Kakaliki. Yeah, saw that on the Wikipedia and said that's got to be in there. The people are going to love this small soup from (laughs) Asia, I think. Is every soup just from the um, number 18? Well, they've got the most people. It would make sense they'd have the most soups. Number eight, Samgitang against Pasta Fajoli. Yeah. All right. Number five, Maki Me against 12 Split P. Maki Me, Asian. Uh, split P, American. Number four, Italian Wedding versus number 13, Amish Preaching Soup. Now, I don't know what Amish Preaching Soup. I'll call Jeff Nadu later and ask him. Okay. But what is Amish Preaching Soup? Not sure, but ain't this a great match up there? Italian Wedding against Amish Preaching? Amish Preaching sounds like a mid major. Yeah, that's a rivalry match. Yeah. I'm going to say seen. Amish Preaching Soup sounds fucking delicious. I, b- I might have a picture on there that might pop up. That's Amish preaching? That's Italian wedding, right? That's Italian wedding. That's not that. <laughs> Maybe the third picture? That's, that's, that's... that's Soup Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I think at a picture of that, I might have been grossed <laughs> out by the Amish preachings. But yeah. Soup Campbell, could he make a run? <laughs> Sixteen oh dong against eleven seed soup Campbell. Number three tomato soup against fourteen spinach. Yeah. Your seven is goulash against ten cabbage soup. The two seed chicken tortilla against stone. I don't know what stone is, but chicken tortilla looks. Stone's probably like one of those medieval soups. Chicken <laughs> tortilla poised to make a run here, although number one seed French onion will be hard to beat. Let's go to the three soup region. How do you know three soup? Oh man. Well, there's oh, man, what? Pictures. We didn't get the effects for this one. Oh, yeah, the That's animation. Right. <laughs> On the right there, you're looking at the shark fin soup. Number one seed gumbo against number 16 gum guck. Asian. Um, Asian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number eight, pozzoli against number nine, hot and sour. Is that Asian? <laughs> Number five, vegetable soup against number 12, chestnut. Four, minestrone against 13, peanut. Peanut soup is a Virginia thing, and it's fucking disgusting. Well, that's why it's the worst. Much like those Virginia Cavaliers at a 10 seed, bad seeding shouldn't be in the dance. (laughs) You chose this dance. Uh, no, actually, I didn't. If you go back to slide one, there's a very. We're not going back to slide one. There's a very clear note that says, I did not make these rankings. Very clear note on slide one. We have to go back to slide one. I need to see. Uh, it's at the bottom left. It's yeah. at the bottom left. That way, it's un- <laughs> Wait, that's that's the very clear note. It says yeah. rankings done by soupology expert Joe Soupnardi. <laughs> oh my god! Who doesn't even care about this time of year? Can you believe that? He's already checked out. Yeah. Guess what he's doing, Mark? He's golfing, probably. He's eating oatmeal. Yeah. Go back to number three. Please. Well, actually, probably doing something else because he's yeah. in soup now. Um, he's uh, water, uh, whatever, uh, water w- basket weaving. <laughs> That's what Soup Nardi's up to. And number six, gazpacho against 11, turtle. Now, there's just no there's there's turtle not, soup. Oh, yeah, there is. Soup. I was stunned because I didn't have turtle in the original field of 65. <laughs> And then I looked up more soups and saw turtle, and that had to get in there. Number three is pho against 14 carrot, seven oxtail, 10 shark fin, and number two, New England clam chowder versus leek soup. Mm-hmm. Um, I like clam chowder to come out of this. I like clam chowder too, but gumbo is is gumbo's hell on wheels. That's a that's a most anticipated one versus two matchup. Yeah, there, I believe. Yeah, that 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 region's going chalk for sure. Now, I there's some bubble teams. I think that I I I don't know if there's enough spots left for the that, soups. You could take that with soup nardi, but we're just hoping. <laughs> like I I like the the gumbo against clam chowder elite eight matchup. If both of them could avoid the mess, that's going to be incredible. 
<laughs> Number four soup, please. No, four soup regions. Four soup regions. Oh, sorry. there's the effects. Yeah. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> the soup is spinning. It's out of control here. This is madness. Number one, broccoli. Uh, ch- what? What is this font? And there he is, folks. There's broccoli cheddar. <laughs> Against number 16, Lung Fung. Yep. Where's that from? You probably know its origin story. <laughs> <laughs> number eight, crab bisque. Against number nine, Simon. Simon. Uh, it looks, Plutman, if I'm being honest, it, it looks Asian. Could be. I don't remember. <laughs> number five, okra soup. Against number 12, sliced fish. Number four, pumpkin against number 13, Carcho. Yeah, people are upset about pumpkin gang seeing that high. That is, Their I think resume that, wasn't worth That four and five is ridiculous. Okra and pumpkin is just that's Look, too high. Pumpkin plays a seasonal schedule. I don't think that they yeah. should be in here. It's not well, your, they shouldn't be over as number six, butternut squash, which is also seasonal. I, no, you up, eat that one ever. Take it up with soup. Nari. This is the region of death. I'm going to say that. And number now. three, Ooh. lobster biscuit against number 14, Yushka. Seven egg drop against ten chestnut and number two matzo ball soup against fish soup bihun. <laughs> yep, that's gonna be a stellar first round matchup. There's, I think matzo ball soup can make a run. There's monsters in this bracket. Fish yeah. soup. I I'd say this is the weakest bracket. Wow. Broccoli cheddar, top tier, pumpkin, really good, butternut squash, elite, lobster bisque, lobster elite, bisque egg is... drop, elite, matzo ball, elite. Yeah. I'll just go ahead and, and I'm gonna ask this question, and I uh, I hate what it's gonna do to the room, but. Uh, isn't chili technically a soup? I don't know. It wasn't on the list of soups on the Wikipedia. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to go with no. If chili's supposed to be a soup, then have the winner of this play chili. But I don't know what you want me to do. You tasked me with one of the most preposterous things anyone's ever been tasked with. I worked hard on this, and... This is a really good bracket. Incredible blood. Man. It's it's awesome. And I want there to be audio th- where I where it was just audio of me saying soup time, soup time, su- soup time. Uh oh, it's soup time, but I couldn't figure that out, so I gave it to you guys there. <laughs> Does Blutman have uh our Twitter credentials? No. No. Because we're gonna need to to put these uh br- um polls out. Okay. Can we Actually, Ebo, you can do that. I don't Is there to legs that. to having Blutman find ways to order all of these soups over the next three and a half weeks and do? Yeah, it that is true. I think we get. I think we get regular updates from. I them. would love. I think you play this bracket out yourself, and you. I there's so much stuff on there. I wouldn't even think of eating. <laughs> I don't want to eat most of that. So you're gonna. What you need to do is, do run the polls on our Twitter, and come back with a sweet sixteen on <laughs> next Monday, right? Yeah, I need you to eat. What if you that. guys say we got it we got it we got to have you execute the sweet 16 now so you guys should be eating some of them this isn't a me project i was just tasked with it and that was I your fault for standing I, there i blessed you guys with it i don't know why i had to stand there i i'm completely confused by that decision <laughs> it wasn't my choice like <laughs> i can't believe he actually put it who do you think is coming out of here with the soup championship uh i'm not gonna get into those politics it's not fair for me as one of the analysts to start assuming what soups are gonna beat who and i'm not doing that <laughs> that's up to you guys god damn it. thank you bloodman thank you bloodman yeah good luck with sandwiches connor <laughs> i'll do my best oh yeah that too that's uh that's kirby. kirby right yeah, last second i found out you could put gifts in <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, uh, I'm so lucky I looked to the right. How many people at this night. company would hear you say that and take it seriously as, as an assignment? Two. Yeah, and he's one. One just walked out, one sitting one on the sitting couch. One on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's... One is already – I guarantee you their sandwich is pulled up on his laptop screen right now. He's. he's I can guarantee you there is not. You haven't started yet? Not yet. What no. are you waiting on? I'll, I'll get on it. Eat chili with a spoon. Mm. Yes. What else would you eat it with? Fork. Yes, you eat it with. That's bad chili if you're eating it with a that's fork. That's too thick. That chili is too thick that you're yeah. eating. No, I don't like a liquid chili. What you're eating is not chili. You're eating just ha- just ground beef. Beans, vegetables. You're eating, that sounds like a stew. Mmm. No stew on there. Oh yeah. 
Visible, draining a half-court buzzer beater to win the game, not easy. Switching to visible and saving on wireless with hit, no hidden fees, yeah, that's pretty easy. Switch to visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide, and get one-line wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon, just $25 a month every month. Taxes and fees included one-line wireless, just $25 a month. Taxes and fees are included, no hidden fees, no gotchas. Visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide. Unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon. Bench wireless with hidden fees and switch to Visible. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan for additional terms and network management practices. See Visible.com. Uh, Cody put a, pointed this out. Uh, Chestnut got the rare double bid to the tournament. He had two chestnuts on there? Chestnuts, a 12 seed in the three soup and a 10 seed in the four soup. Oh, wow. my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I, yeah. That's uh, tough. That's tough. We got to put Blutman in timeout. Man. We got to think of a punishment. Yeah, I guess he has that's, to do the candy bar racket now. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I want to punish him, but also. <laughs> I want more fact that. that he, yeah. The fact that he put any time into this whatsoever mm -hmm. is stunning to me. I like that he got to the very end and realized you could put a gif in there. <laughs> and left it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> just... Yeah, because you can put it anywhere you want. Right. <laughs> no you could go back and put them throughout the presentation. He's like, no, I'm just going to put it at the end here. Who will win the super duper dance? Um, what else? What else? Uh, well, we haven't got to a lot. In fact, ball that opponent. We, we we can we're done with college basketball. No, we're not. We can be done. I don't think we can. Okay, go ahead. Is Lunardi quiet quitting? Yeah, let's talk about this because we because <laughs> Blutman Blutman mentioned it a little bit. Yeah, and, and we, we should have mentioned it already. Yeah. Lunardi was bizarre this weekend, right? Yeah, he's lost his marbles a little bit. It was the, Friday night, I guess, about 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. There's still some games going on. He tweets out that Virginia Virginia won, even though they, 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 they lost. They ended up losing to NC State. So Virginia won. I'm going to bed, guys. Good night for me. I'll see you at, at fucking 10 o'clock at night. And then yesterday he had two bizarre ones. He said, um, like, 3 o'clock. Oh, now we're entering the worst hour of the year for me, or something like that, right? Yeah. And after the bracket was – this was the worst one of all. After the bracket was put out there, he, like, tweets a picture saying, well, I'm done for the year. See you guys. Yeah. He just doesn't watch the tournament? He does not watch the tournament. <laughs> yeah, in two hours – he did the uh, two hours till I get a golf yeah. thing. When, He's on vacation As now. the Big Ten tournament was about to tip off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he doesn't watch the tournament. He hates basketball, apparently. I think he's quiet quitting. I, I think he's yeah. just done with this shit. And he's like, I'm not gonna quit. I I'm hate gonna... that. I, I hate my job so much. I hate that. Like I've become like a mall Santa, where yeah. they roll me out for two weeks a year. <laughs> I hate this so much. But also, you got the easiest job in the world, dude. You think Lenardi now goes through like a week of plastic surgery and becomes Mel Kiper Jr. <laughs> and then <laughs> Mel Kiper Jr. becomes whoever the NBA guy is, yeah. and he becomes whoever who's, the next who guy is. The NBA guy that only pops up for the. It was like. Tom Penn there for a second. He used to do the NBA draft where he was Yeah. He was the executive that had the the knowledge there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the NBA draft guy is. Cause all the crew they put out who who's on the desk now? It's like Jay Billis. It changes a lot. Stephen A and Wilbon or something. Yeah, I think they yeah. tried to stick Woj there as like putting him in timeout so yeah. he didn't spoil a draft, but it, it didn't work. Yeah. Um Big Day from O's. Yeah, he's tuckered out. Yeah. Blutman's probably laying face down. <laughs> yeah, Blutman is too. <laughs> yeah, my game. Like, I'm tuckered out too. I get. I did think belly. we had like two golden, like goldens in the room at the same time <laughs> when he was in there, just like yeah. talking. One's just in human form. We um, haven't been called for the uh, bracket thing yet, which is probably a bad sign. That's a bad sign. We're gonna get a bad team. Yeah, a really bad team. Unless, although it is a Barstool production, could be starting 15 to 20 minutes late. So. No, they're started. They've started. They're Good. Starting. Could we send Mo's out there? Yeah, I just wonder how we would do it, but I'm fine with that. You want to use a pick from his bracket? Yeah, who did he – UAB? Well, UAB, I mean, he's yeah. – Ride with Moe's. If, if we get UAB, available. that'd be great. Who else did he have going far? Uh, well, he had South Dakota State making the Elite Eight. Nevada. Cle uh, yeah, Clemson's not. Um, South Dakota State. Was South Dakota State. Actually, he's only got two double-digit seeds in the Elite Eight. Yeah, I mean, we could – Kind of a responsible bracket, if we're being honest. And remind me the rules of the bracket busters. If your team makes the Sweet 16, you win. Uh, whoever, I think this year is whoever makes it farthest. Oh, it's just the single team yeah. that makes it the farthest. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else? Let's see what we got here. Um, did we talk Black Dick yet? <laughs> I think 
I think we touched on that. I think we touched on the uh, black dick. No, we did the basketball thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin Fields was traded. That was big news this weekend in non-college basketball news. Justin Fields is interesting to me. Because there's still an element, a segment of the Bears fan base, and I, this is probably impossible to talk about with you because he's an Ohio State guy. There's a segment of the Bears fan base that's still like, oh, God damn it, we we gave up on him too soon, or he was our guy, I wish he was still here. But if you look across the league, this isn't the only guy that just got given up on by his team. Mac Jones gets traded for a six-round pick, yeah. right? Kenny Pickett gets traded for nothing. And now Justin Fields gets traded for nothing. These guys get taken in the first round. They get a three-year run. It doesn't work. They're gone. The Bears fans seem to be the only ones holding on to this guy. Well, some Bears fans. I'll some Bears fans. But I don't see any Steelers fans being like, oh, Kenny Pickett. We should have. We should have held on to yeah, him. Cause yeah, because, I mean, they know. He just wasn't. He wasn't I'm confused yet. by the confusion of people that defend Justin Fields and like Justin Fields, but then it seems like there are people that are like, why the fuck do people like this guy so much when it's, like, pretty obvious he's yeah. a great – like, his talent aside, like, it's pretty obvious why he's liked. It's because he's extremely likable, Brandon. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a good dude and, and a locker room – guy and like all that sort of thing whether yeah. whether you think he's a great quarterback or not like it's it's easy to see why people will fight for him but that that's it's confusing to me why people are confused why people are defending justin fields Conf i'm confused at the confusion of the confusion that's where i'm at with it all here's the thing if the bears had the number four pick in the draft they might not move on from justin i don't think fields. they do yeah right if they have the number two pick in the draft they might not move right. on from Justin Fields. But they have a chance to get Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams won the Heisman Trophy last year, and I don't think he's a Patrick Mahomes-level uh, prospect, but he is a, a good prospect, a solid number one pick prospect. You put him on your team at a cheap contract for or the cheapest contract you can for a number one pick for four years, you see what happens. If you get a chance to him, you have to take it. You yeah. have to take it. Yeah. So I don't know. But I do think Fields – I guess I'm giving into it a little bit because – I think Mac Jones will never be a, a an actual starter in the NFL again. He might start a game, yeah. but he'll never be a starting uh, somebody's starting franchise quarterback. Kenny Pickett will never be somebody's starting franchise quarterback. I can see Justin Fields being the Steelers. If you're if you're doing over under game started for the Steelers with Justin Fields and it's like one and a half, I'm I'm going over. Absolutely going over. Yeah, because I I think maybe it, not this season, but like whatever in the next couple. You put of him years. on the bench behind Russ Wilson for a year. You, you yeah. ride that out, see what happens. And by the way, if you're if you're five and seven, Justin Fields starts the entire month of December and January. Yeah. Um, and you just you see what you got. But um, I wonder how much uh, with football. Uh, th this happens a lot in basketball where you get a guy like uh, you get a guy that can't shoot, and coaches believe that they can fix him. Yeah, it's he's he's just needs that one little tweak. I wonder if like the Steelers, Fields wanted to go to the Steelers. By the way, I don't know if you saw that report. I that, did. Like, Why? I don't. I'm, he's I was from Georgia. Yeah, they said that there were a handful of suitors, and yeah. he wanted to go to the Steelers. Yeah, there they, were six teams that inquired. Yeah, about him, and he chose the Steelers. And he chose the Steelers. Who had he had he chose the Steelers, having already known that Russell Wilson had yeah. gone to the Steelers. Um, but maybe there's like a thing with the Steelers where they're like, we can take for a year and teach him how to read defenses, I guess. Because mm -hmm. that seems to be the only – people that say he can't throw aren't paying any He can defense. throw. He can throw. He, he can just, throw. He can't read defenses. He can run. He can throw. Level. Yeah, that's that's a fair that's a fair criticism. But he's also – Hold on to the ball too. Who the fuck's oh, that's, been teaching him to read a defense? Right. It's been a different offensive coordinator that's why, every year. That's why I think whether whether it's true or not, I do think that there are probably coaches and maybe they're probably on the Steelers that are like, we can, we can fix this because – you can't you can't teach a guy to be fast as fuck and elusive in the open field. You can't teach a guy to like have the touch that he has with throws and and, Throw it and a rocket yards. arm and all that. But maybe you can teach him. Do you see that safety that's like kind of creeping over there? He's mm -hmm. doing that for a reason. Don't throw that over <laughs> there. He's gonna he's gonna go that way. Yeah. So like maybe throw it back over this way where he's coming from. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I as a guy who wants Justin Fields to be successful, I I'm, I'm happy with where he ended up because I think uh, that's what's going to happen. I think he's going to like start as the backup. And then maybe gets maybe he shifts into a starting role later in this year, or maybe he takes a year off and uh, works on some shit and comes back next year as the starter. That's possible. Yeah, I think he'll start for the Steelers. I do too. Yeah, I think. I think at some point he will be the Steelers the, starting quarterback. Yeah. Dave and Buster's is the best place to watch basketball this March. Eighty-six percent of American employees will spend at least some time at work keeping track of March basketball. 
Stop pretending to work. Watch the games at Dave and Buster's. On March 21st, Dave and Buster's will have an all-day $5 happy hour to celebrate the first full day of games at participating locations only. Stop pretending to work. Come to Dave and Buster's on March 21st for all-day $5 happy hour and all-day basketball at participating locations. Stop pretending to work. Come to Dave and Buster's on March 21st for all-day $5 happy hour and all-day basketball at participating locations. I've just been what a hit, shot. hit with a pang of regret. I think we should, somebody should go check on the the event out there because I'm scared they're going to skip is, it. Yeah, is there a chance they drew us first? Yes, and like, there's a very good Oh, chance. those guys are doing the show. Let's go. I'm going to go check. Like, yeah. You you talk to Moses. All right. Well, Moses is sleeping. Uh, talk to Connor. Why, is, uh, why you have one shoe in your hand? I don't know. Yeah, wait, you were going the full show with only one shoe on? What? You gave it to Blutman. You gave it to Blutman. Blutman has my sheet? Yeah, you gave him. Let me go look. Let me go look. By the way, Brandon's sheet. I saw the sheet. The sheet was Brandon wrote down nine seeds, colon, and then wrote the four nine seeds. Ten seeds, colon, and then wrote the four ten seeds. Um, I don't think you need a sheet for that. <laughs> I think you could discern that just by looking at the bracket right i don't know yeah. he, he uh went through the trouble of putting his sheet together what a shot right there and just posing uh, Moses just tweet this screenshot out and just be like me with my bracket <laughs> like thousand likes you picked north carolina to win it all it's dog nose ball dude let's dog nose ball. i love the bracket uab is a little bit uab is a little crazy yeah but, but otherwise he's been known to do that um yeah he, he's never had a perfect bracket none of us have do you uh have have you ever felt like you were close to having a perfect bracket? Was there ever a moment that you look back on and you're like, I had a hot start that one time? Because it does feel like within the first five games, every single year, you're like, I, I guess I guess there there it goes. I, I think the farthest I made it was day two, when I was like 98th percentile or 99th percentile. Yeah, you missed a couple, and then it just tanked after that, and I wound up in like 40th. I've had a strong finish, never a strong start. The um, Louisville Final Four got everyone except Wichita State in that one. That was pretty good. Yeah. Which, which was uh, 2013. Louisville, Syracuse, Michigan. Uh, Michigan and Wichita State, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Wichita State beat Ohio State, I think, in the lead eight that year. I have a related question that I was going to ask Brandon too, but we could ask it without him here. One of my least favorite things about March Madness season is when people are always like, oh, I picked that upset, and then I say – well, how many brackets did you fill out? Yeah. They said, well, I had it in, like, one of my eight. I had that in my other bracket. Yeah. So are we, uh, as a show, are we one bracket? And I'm a one bracket guy, out? but when I get it wrong, I do tell people I had it in my other bracket. Okay. <laughs> when, uh, like, I picked Mississippi State to beat North Carolina, not because I necessarily think Mississippi State's better than North Carolina, but I was just kind of wanting to shake things up a little bit, mm -hmm. and I wanted to pick a one seed to lose, and I feel like North Carolina is the most susceptible one seed. Um. But it, when North Carolina beats Mississippi State and all the Carolina fans are like, you fucking idiot, your dog is smarter than you, um, I'm going to say I had I had North Carolina in my other bracket. That's my that's my get out of jail. I don't actually have another bracket, yeah. but you just say it. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, I, you have to be a one-bracket guy. I get That pisses me off so much. Or if you I, – I think you can fill out multiple brackets. Just don't – Don't brag don't about Don't present it. them to the public. Yeah. Like, do it in your own time and, like, have your own curiosity. But you can't be, like, going up to your buddies and saying, I called this. You have to submit one bracket to your friend group, one bracket to the pools, one bracket to society at large, and you say, "This is my one bracket." I'm doing all this on on the side is fun, you know. Agreed. Yeah, all these are your mistresses. Like keeping them hidden, <laughs> keep them. You can you can you can deal with them, but just like keep them over there. We need to know who the one. We, you're bringing one. You're bringing one bracket out in the public. You're being seen with one bracket, you know. The mistresses go do that in the dark. Side piece brackets. Your side piece brackets. <laughs> don't be don't be bringing your side pieces out to restaurants on on a Friday night in front of everybody. You know what I mean? Like that's reserve that for your wife. Mistresses, you can get into a little seedy situation, but keep that to yourself is what I think. Um, I I I'm a paper bracket guy too. Are you guys? Do you guys do paper? Or do you guys like to fill it out on? You guys? One paper. You gotta do at least one paper. Yeah. That's the. I think. Uh, that's it's funny that you you mentioned that we we're out of paper because I I do think that that's like half the printing that goes on in offices happens. Where's Brandon? On you this guys are day. up. You guys are up. Oh, we're up. Yeah, I have the list of who got taken. Can we? Don't say it. Don't say, no, yeah, it. Don't say it. Can Can you show me? Brandon should be. Up I won't. Here. I won't say who we're gonna take, but I'm gonna. That's the teams that got taken. You're up. You're up. 
picked. Okay, don't say who you picked. Don't say who don't you say picked. Who we picked? Uh, I right, well, that's a lot of teams. So, just give me one of these. Give me the give me the gladiator. Thumb up, thumb down. Nice. I like it. I like the pick. Dun, 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 dun. The pick is in. The pick is in. All right. Yeah. Airs tomorrow. It airs tomorrow. Yep. Uh, where are we at? We're just talking brackets. We're talking. Uh, are your parents just standing outside the? Is that your parents? Yeah, my mom might be. They're taking Moses. Oh. They're gonna. Watch. Did he leave? No, he's he's right there. But they're gonna. They drove up from Indy. They're gonna dog sit for me this week because I'm gonna be a busy boy. Really? Watching a lot of basketball. Mm-hmm. I'll we'll be here locked in the gambling cave. Moe's needs attention. You see how needy he is? Look at yeah. that dog. No, it's he's, it's, it's he's so fucking. I was. Needy. I wanted to talk to yeah. you about it. <laughs> he, needs, uh, he, he won't shut the fuck up. He's 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 crazy. He's just a crazy dog. Moe's. All on. right. I love him so much. Moses. Okay. I love that dog so much. How did the uh, the Chicago winter treat him? Coming from L.A. This is his bones, man. What? His, his, what? You lived in L.A. Yeah, Mo- well, I didn't just live in L.A. Moses lived in L.A. Really? Yeah, and you know what's crazy, and uh, I haven't shared this story. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. On that fateful day that I ran into Jane Lynch, Moses was with me. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, we were on the patio eating, and uh, and I actually didn't see her at first. And Moses was laying down like he is like kind of right there. I mean, you can give people a visual. Like, picture that. And then his head pops up. And then he looks up, and he's like, I think that's Jane Lynch. <laughs> And I turn around, and I'll be goddamned. There she was. So Moses saw Jane Lynch first. She, he did, yeah. He did, yeah. But there she was, Jane Lynch, <laughs> in all her glory. <laughs> and again, I, I, I got it. I don't know if I don't know if I was clear last time. She's exactly as tall as you think she is. That's the thing that people miss about her. She's is she exactly, exactly as tall as Moses thought she was? That's what I don't know. We'll never know, really. <laughs> we'll never know. Uh, what's going on in the world of silly? Um, I don't. My she- sheets are all to the wind here. Um, you've got a Toyota tel- engineers develop vehicle inspired by Pokemon character. Uh, and then we have this picture of a Gyarados. That's a Gyarados. That's a Gyarados. I, no, I think it's. This is uh, a, uh, I think this is the one from uh, Diamond. This is like generations after Gyarados. Hold on, I gotta pull out my Gyarados. It's Miradon. Um. I've never seen this Pokemon before. I'm going to pull out my Pokemon here so I can compare my... You know, Tommy was here the other day. I know. I, was so I don't know if he went through those cards or not. I was so scared. Well, my rares are supposed to be on top, and right now I have basic energy. So Well, that's on crazy. Top, so I, I, I'm not accusing Tommy, but something's happened. Oh, uh, somebody went through those somebody cards. Somebody went through those cards. I- Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Pokemon music. There he is. On the scale of 0 to 100, 0 being me, 100 being nerdy, like the nerdiest nerd ever, mm-hmm. where is Pokemon? It, it, Pokemon, if you're a Pokemon fan, you're like, is that entry-level nerd or is that graduate school nerd? I, I think it's uh, I think it's basic bitch nerd because everyone kind of got into it. And right. If you're deep into it, you're like a level 100 nerd. You think you're a 0 on the nerd scale? Yeah, I'm zero on the nerd. So the, the, you, hundred being is it nerd, like a horseshoe? Hundred being yeah. nerd. It's the it's a horseshoe being, scale. Being me. Do a little three sixty real quick. Pussy getting cool guy. Just look around you for five seconds and then come back. Puss, pussy getting cool guy nerd. Uh, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Oh, that's Willie Mays. I mean, that's an incredible. But I think, I think someone was in my Pokemon shit, dude. I'm seeing. Did you get my Pokemon? All I'll say is this. <laughs> I don't have my Jardos. Well, how do you say it? Well, I guarantee you they didn't take anything. They probably looked at them. Um, I did have three young sons here Saturday. They're, no. They didn't take your Jardos. My Jardos is gone, dude. Nobody took your Jardos. Where's my Jardos? We're not gonna accuse the the Walker boys of thieving. I'm not. Jardos. I didn't. I never said that. I never said that. I never said anybody took anything. I'm not accusing anybody. There's there are no fingers being pointed. I'm just stating facts. I cannot find my Jardos. I gotta call Tommy. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm not accusing Tommy. He might have, because I'm I'm noticing a lot of cards that I've never seen before. So maybe he backfilled. Maybe he did a trade, a fair trade that I. This is like a Houndstone, dude. I've never had a Houndstone. I've never had a Houndstone. That might not. That, is that Magic the Gathering? That's not a Pokemon. Why is he doing FaceTime unavailable? Why is, is, he, is he watching the show? Dude, a Maba Stiff I've never had. I've never had You don't know stiff. that you've had a Maba Stiff or not. A, what's going on? Am I getting... Hold on. Wait. What? Is that somebody else's? This is maybe not my collection. Maybe this is a good thing. Did Tommy... Did he leave his own collection? There's the Giardos. Well, I knew we didn't take the Giardos. I, I, I know. I know. Yeah. I never said he did. <laughs> you were leaning towards it. No, I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of what's going on here. That's all. We had a we had a nervy moment there. I, I don't know where this Maba stuff came from. Are you getting ghosted by your kid, Brandon? It's crazy. What's going on? <laughs> dude, look at this. Reggie Licky v <laughs> Look at that shit, dude. All right. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was trying to find the, trying to find the Jardos. Oh, my face is breaking out. Doesn't look good. Is that not the same? Doesn't look good at all. One of them is made out of metal. Mm -hmm. I need oh, a, I need yeah, an this ointment. Is just, this is just a card. Or a no, <laughs> and the other one's a. Gyarados is like a fish. I need an ointment. Gyarados is a fish? Do you don't have any ointments? Water or a dragon or something. Oh. Any creams? Mirrodon is like a guy made out of metal. Any <laughs> lotions? I'm sorry if it came across as me accusing your son of stealing my Gyarados. That's not what I was doing. I was just saying I couldn't find it. Where's the, the where, What's the second collection from? I don't know. I don't know where those came from. These might be my basic the bitch cards. I don't know. Honestly, I, pr I probably just misunderstood my own collection. I didn't accuse... That dog of stealing. Uh, his name first. Moses. What the is dog? Tommy just not in? Is he just completely? I don't know what he's doing. They might be homeschooling right now. They might be like in a session. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, did you go through Mark Titus's Pokemon cards when you were here Saturday? I didn't say you did, Tommy. You didn't? No. Did you see him? No. Would you have gone through him? No. All right. I, he's a man of honor. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Hi, Dad. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right. Is he sitting on the John? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? We got to do our yes. wall shining moment. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wall shining moment. This segment is brought to you by Wall. Cutting your hair at home isn't as hard as you think. Give your first DIY haircut the old college try with help from Wall. Wall is the brand used by professionals as it has been in business for over 100 years. Being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Guards aren't just for on the court. The Color Pro Cordless Clipper is your styling MVP with an array of easy to see attachment guards, ensuring you can easily score the perfect haircut length. Color Pro Cordless is rechargeable and wireless, which allows you to use the clipper on the go or when it's charging because looking sharp should be a slam dunk. Buy the Wall Cordless Color Pro today. Wall. Um, let's see. What do we got today? What do we got? We have a yeah. It's it's, it's coming. We don't want to look at the dog. Celebrity region top half. Uh, two thousand era Justin Timberlake against the king of rock and roll Elvis Presley, both with severe Memphis ties. One being <laughs> from Mississippi, with the sideburns and the quaff. The other with the curly. I'm going to go ahead and call this one. It's Elvis. Can I call Elvis? Yeah, yeah, this is Elvis. This is obviously Elvis. I mean, um, Justin Timberlake doesn't even... You're not a fan of the boy band hair back in the day? You didn't think that was the coolest thing ever in the 90s? I did not, no. You ever have frosted tips? You, ever, you kind of already Never frosted my hair. tips. Never. Yeah. Never. Did you ever have frosted tips? No, I wanted to. Uh, we couldn't afford them. Which one of the cast boys do you want to make frost their tips? I mean, obviously Evo. Evo has the, yeah. the hair for it. Evo, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and need frosted tips by the end of 2025. Okay. Connor already has frosted tips a little bit, like naturally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your tips are a little frosty as is. I guess so. I found my first natural frosted tip the other day. Oh, no. Not yeah. good. Yep. You mean 
gray, gray hairs. hairs. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Gray hairs. Yeah. It's bad. Did you it was... pluck it? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to. Yep. Welcome to that. Elvis moves on. I think. Good for Elvis. I think we're having Elvis move mm-hmm. on. Do you think Elvis is dead? Well, yeah, that. But also, do you think he is like the greatest musician here of all time? I know, uh, we we haven't gotten to the rest of the bracket yet, but do you think? He, I mean, he's way up there. Yeah, way up there. Um, but if his hair is so good, why isn't it, why isn't it emulated more? I mean, if you just show people, me that hair, I kind of retired I, it. I know it's Elvis. If you just showed me Justin Timberlake's hair, I would think little orphan Annie. I would think Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Anybody. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but if his hair is so good, why is it not more popular? You know. Because it's, it's, it's Elvis. I think it's hair. just his hair. It's his hair. Yeah. yeah. No one else can do it. It'd be lame if you try to do Elvis's hair. Yeah. You could do Elvis hair. I might do Elvis hair. Do well, Elvis hair. It also just feels hard to do. Like, the sideburns are alone or a big upkeep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, best Mississippian ever, Elvis Presley? Uh, him or Oprah. Oprah's Mississippian. Mm-hmm. She's born there, then she left. He was he... Britney Spears from Mississippi, right? Born there, yeah. What she... does that mean? Uh, born, you were born there and you left. Oprah, Oprah was born there and like left when she was two. Oh, Britney Spears was born there because and then lived on a Louisiana town right across the border. Elvis lived there for like eighteen years. Then he yeah. then he moved, so he grew up there. So Elvis, yeah, Elvis number one. I mean, he's the most famous person ever, right? In the history of the world, he's up there. I'd say Jesus, but Jesus was born in Mississippi. The Beatles are bigger than Jesus, and the Beatles were influenced by Elvis. John Lennon said that Elvis. So it's a circle. So John Lennon said that I'm bigger than Jesus, but Elvis is bigger than, is me. Bigger than me. But so I think Elvis would say Jesus, like Jesus. Elvis loved Jesus. Yeah, Elvis, big Jesus guy. Yeah, so Jesus is bigger than Elvis. Yeah, that's a great. Uh, you know what? Work on that bracket for us, Evo. Put together a bracket. Humans of, of just humans. <laughs> Top sixty four humans. Uh is that it? That's it. Are we done? No, um yeah, thank you to everybody watching. Yeah, all yet. Uh subscribe. Subscribe for Moses. Since we're just talking, it's just I'm subscribe gonna subscribe for Moses. I plan for the ne- rest of March to give Blutman increasingly obscure it's brackets. Insane. Yeah, yeah, brackets. And I'm done with that. Yeah. So just between me and you though. Can we do numbers? Yeah. We can do whatever y'all Try want. Try to just do do it gradually though, because I want to see where his line is when he no longer puts it together because like okay. i think i think if you asked him to do another one tomorrow he would work on it yeah another, but like if you asked him to do the top 64 like airplane engines actually he might do that <laughs> <laughs> you know like it, it, what what is the most insane where where does he draw the line where he's like i'm not doing we're that. gonna find this line yeah i want you to find the line all right um all right also sandwiches tomorrow you okay see you guys you. tomorrow that's how ball is done